In traditional English grammar, a part of speech is a category of words that have similar grammatical properties. Parts of speech tell us how a word is used in a sentence. Sometimes parts of speech are called word classes. There are eight main parts of speech in English nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Each part of speech has a specific use or function. In general, a noun is a naming word, which is the name of something. A pronoun replaces a noun. An adjective describes something. A verb is an action or a state of being. An adverb normally describes a verb. Or sometimes gives more information about an adjective. A preposition shows a relationship or connection between things. A conjunction is a joining word that connects two parts of a sentence. An interjection expresses a strong feeling or emotion. Now, This is just a very general overview of each part of speech, and each class can have more than one use, which we will see in a moment. Most parts of speech can be divided into subclasses. For example, nouns can be divided into proper nouns and common nouns. Countable nouns or uncountable nouns, etc. Prepositions can be divided into prepositions of time, prepositions of place, etc. Now let's look at the eight main parts of speech in English. A noun is a naming word. A noun is used to name a thing, a person, an animal. A place or an idea. For example, we can name things. This is a table. What is the name of this thing? It is a table. Table is the name of this thing, so table is a noun. We can name a thing, table, car, strawberry, mountain. These are all names of things. We can name a person Daniel, Diego, Angelica, Robert. We can name an animal dog, cat, duck, elephant. We can name a place London, Egypt, California, Paris. We can name an idea happiness, hope, love, freedom. Let's look at some example sentences. Steve lives in Sydney. In this sentence, there are two nouns. Can you see them? Steve is the name of a person. Sydney is the name of a place. Steve and Sydney are nouns. The next example. Mary uses a blue pen to write letters. Mary is the name of a person. Pen is the name of the object or thing. Letters is the name of the other object or thing that she is writing. Mary, pen, and letters are nouns. A pronoun is used in place of a noun or noun phrase to avoid repetition. Examples are I, you, it, we, us, them, those. Let's look at this example. Mary is tired. She wants to sleep. The subject pronoun she replaces Mary. If we say Mary is tired. Mary wants to sleep. 
Saying the noun Mary twice, it sounds repetitive. So the second Mary becomes a pronoun, more specifically a subject pronoun. Mary is tired. She wants to sleep. There are other types of pronouns which we will see in more detail in another video, but I will quickly mention them here. Let's look at this sentence. I want her to dance with me. I is a subject pronoun. Her is an object pronoun. We use her instead of saying the name of the woman. Let's say it is Mary. I want Mary to dance with me. Since we are already talking about Mary, we don't repeat her name. I want her to dance with me. The final me is also an object pronoun. Another type of pronoun is a possessive pronoun, such as mine, yours, hers, etc. This bike is my bike. This sounds repetitive, doesn't it? Bike is a noun. We can replace the final my bike with mine. This bike is mine. Mine is a possessive pronoun. As I mentioned before, we will see more about pronouns in another video. But basically, pronouns replace nouns or noun phrases to avoid repetition. An adjective describes, modifies, or gives more information about a noun or pronoun. Examples are cold, happy, young. These words describe something. They are adjectives. Look at our example sentence. The little girl has a pink hat. In this sentence, there are two adjectives. Can you see them? How do we describe the girl? Little. Little is an adjective because it gives more information about the girl. How do we describe the hat? It is pink. Pink is an adjective. When there is a noun, the adjective goes before the noun in English. We don't say the girl little. No, we say the little girl. We don't say the hat pink. No, we say the pink hat. Another example. My sister is intelligent and fun. Intelligent and fun are adjectives because they describe my sister. A verb shows an action or state of being. A verb can show what someone or something is doing. Examples of verbs include go, speaking, ate, lived, been, is. For example, I watch Woodward English videos. I study their charts and play their games. There are three verbs in these examples. Can you see them? Yes, watch, study, and play are all verbs. They show an action. Watch is an action. Study is an action, and play is an action. Verbs can also show a state of being or existence. I am happy. Am is not an action, but is used to introduce a state. In this case, the feeling of happiness. I am happy. I feel sick. Feel is another example of a verb. Verbs. Have different tenses which tell us when an action happens or happened. For example, there is the past tense. I lived in Russia last year. The present tense. I live in Chile right now. 
the future tense. I will live in Italy next year. There are many verb tenses. These are just three of the most common ones. There are also different types of verbs, such as main verbs, auxiliary verbs, and modal verbs. But we will see more about these in another video. An adverb describes or modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. An adverb. Can give us more information about a verb, and it tells us how, how often, where, when, or to what extent. Many adverbs end in ly. For example, I am speaking slowly. Can you see the adverb here? First, what is the verb? Speaking. How are we describing the way I speak? Slowly. Slowly is an adverb of manner, as it gives us more information about the way I speak. Yesterday I ate my lunch quickly. Here are two adverbs. Yesterday. Is an adverb of time, saying when something happened, and quickly is an adverb of manner, saying how the action happened. The most common types of adverbs are adverbs of manner. They answer the question how. For example, slowly, loudly, easily. Adverbs of frequency. These answer the question: How often? For example, always, usually, never. Adverbs of place answer the question: Where? For example, here, there, outside, above. Adverbs of time. These answer the question: When? For example, yesterday, now, soon. Adverbs of degree. These answer the question to what extent. For example, very, rarely, to, so, quite. A preposition shows the relationship of a noun, noun phrase, or a pronoun to another word. Some examples of prepositions include at, on, in, from, with, about. Look at this example that has two prepositions. Can you see them? I left my keys on the table for you. The first preposition is on, a preposition of place. It tells us where something is. The second preposition is for, which shows the relationship. The next example: My birthday is in January. The preposition in is a preposition of time that introduces the time period and lets us know that my birthday is in that period of time. See our video about the prepositions of time at, on, and in. The most common prepositions include time, place, or a relationship. A conjunction joins words, ideas, phrases, or clauses together in a sentence and shows how they are connected. Examples are and, or, but, because, until, if. I was hot and tired, but I still finished it. In this sentence, and joins the adjectives hot and tired together. To express that I felt these together, but is also a conjunction to join the first clause "I was hot and tired" with the second "I still finished it." But is used to contrast that even though I was hot and tired, I was still able to finish it. Another example: I listened to music while I was running. While 
is also a conjunction that joins two clauses. It shows there is a relation or connection between the two. An interjection is a word or phrase that expresses a strong feeling or emotion. It is a short exclamation that is used more in spoken English than written English. Examples of interjections are Ouch! Hey! Wow! Ah! You can see that interjections often end in an exclamation mark. Some examples Ouch! I just hit my thumb! The interjection ouch is used to express that something painful just happened. Wow! I passed my English exam! Wow! is used to express surprise or amazement. Sometimes with interjections, the exclamation mark is at the end of the sentence and not immediately after the interjection, as in the case of the last sentence. It is important to know that sometimes a word can be in more than one part of speech or word class, depending on its function. For example, with the word increase or increase. Increase can be a verb. For example, prices increased last year. And increase can also be a noun. For example, there was an increase in the number of followers. Did you see the difference in pronunciation? Increase is the verb. Increase is the noun. Bonus section. Thank you for watching up until now. So, in traditional English grammar, there are eight parts of speech. Nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. But sometimes teachers include a ninth part of speech, or a ninth word class. This class is called articles. The articles in English are a, an, and the. Articles help to define nouns. A, and also an, are used to talk about a noun in general. The is used to talk about a specific noun. Look at this example. I need a dictionary. A is an indefinite article. We're talking about a dictionary in general. The dictionary needs to be in English. The is a definite article and is used to be more specific. In traditional grammar, articles appear under the category of adjectives. Sometimes articles are included in a larger ninth word class called determiners. A determiner is a word or phrase that appears before a noun or at the beginning of a noun phrase. A determiner can tell us whether something is specific or general and helps us to identify things. Determiners include articles, a and the, possessives, my, your, his, her, its, our, their, demonstratives, this, that, these, those, numbers, we have cardinal numbers, one, two, three, and ordinal numbers, first, second, third, quantifiers, some, many, other, several, few. Interrogatives. What, which, whose. We will see more about determiners in another lesson. I hope this video was useful for you. Remember to subscribe to our channel and have an awesome day.